hi everybody good morning so now here we are going to start with science chapter number 2 the name of the chapter is adaptations by the plants you have learned uh, one chapter you have completed it there is no doubt remaining now we will learn about the adaptations of the plants the plants change themselves according to the situation that is known as adaptation so shall we start okay this is part 1 of of the chapter we are not taking the part the chapter as a whole we will learn only one part of the chapter okay let us have a look on the important topics which we are going to cover we will learn about different topics in this chapter what are they they are adaptations for getting sunlight adaptations for getting and storing water adaptations for getting air adaptations for getting food adaptations for protection and adaptations for seed dispersal these are the six topics which we have to cover in this part okay in this part 1 in the first part we will cover the first five topics so are you ready okay moving ahead to the first one adaptations for getting sunlight the trees and the plants make some changes in their behavior according to the situation if they don't get sunlight they will make some changes in them this is known as adaptation for getting sunlight let us have a look what are they trees generally grow straight and tall in a forest you know in a forest we can see very tall trees they grow very tall in a forest there is a competition between them to reach higher to get some light among these trees there is a competition why competition they compete with each other to reach higher why do they want to reach higher because they want to get sunlight there is a thick vegetation in the forested region and in all the regions where forest is very thick there the it is very difficult for the smaller plants to get the sunlight so what do they do they try to be very tall so that they will get sunlight so they grow tall okay have a look here these are a group of trees which have been shown and these trees there are some small and some bigger trees are there they are the trees who are big which are big only will get the sunlight others will not get they will not get the sunlight so the try the trees in this region try to get more high they 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 grow to get more and more sunlight sunlight is very necessary for their growth so they tr- they get they achieve or uh, they try to get a great height okay this is one way of adaptation they can grow tall only when they grow straight if the trees can grow tall only when they grow straight and this growing tall is an adaptation this this process of taking height getting high this process of growing tall that is an example of adaptation okay this is example here also we can see that the trees there is a competition it feels because all of them are of the same height which means that they all grow tall and that way of adaptation is known as that way of attitude change or behavioral change uh, is known as adaptation so shall we move ahead okay creepers and climbers have developed long tendrils you know that 
creepers and climbers are those plants which cannot stand straight isn't it creepers they grow along the ground climbers what do they do they climb the other trees climbers take the support of other trees with the help of their tendrils they develop long tendrils so that they can take the support of the bigger plants they twine around a support to climb it what do the plants do either they develop their long tendrils and with the help of the tendrils they move on otherwise they twine the plants growing part itself make a round it, it takes the support of the plant or tree or the pole that is known as twining so almost all the kinds of trees and plants have adaptation for getting sunlight they climb upwards on the trunk of the trees to reach the sunlight if the climbers and the creepers don't take the support for example what will happen they will be on the ground itself and they will get very less amount of sunlight so what do they do they climb they climb and the creepers go to that area where direct sunlight is available in plenty all the climbers take the support of their tendril take the help of their tendrils and they get the support of the pole or the trunk of the trees or the branches of the trees etc otherwise they twine around the pole see this example this this is a climber you can see the tendril in it at the same time the tendril has been used and the twining also is done it is a money plan okay so moving ahead okay now we are moving to the second adaptation second method of adaptation which is that adaptation for getting and storing water so which type of trees no need it the trees which grow in those areas which receive very less rainfall in those areas which receive very less rainfall trees have very less amount of water there they have to adapt themselves so that they can get and store water in desert we do not find trees because that is a very dry place with little water you know what is a desert there is a desert is a large sandy area there we cannot find any trees why why there is no trees in the desert because that is a very dry place why it is a dry place because it it gets either no water or little water that is why it is a dry area and there we cannot find any trees it is very hot there during the day and cold at night during in the desert region during the days it is very hot the temperature rises very high during the day but when it becomes night the temperature cools down okay roots of desert plants go deep underground water the desert plants have a particular method of adaptation what is that their roots go deep underground water so that they can get water there they have a very long roots plants lose water through pores of leaves that you know you have learned about it no transpiration that process is known as transpiration there are pores there are holes on the leaves and those through those hole holes the plants lose water the water contents in the plant moves to the environment thus the plant cannot store much water normally but what the trees in the desert region have done the desert plants do not have leaves many of the desert plants don't either they do not have the leaves or they are, they have very small leaves so that they will not lose water 
if they are having broad leaves like the other trees or plants what will happen they will lose their water so it will be very difficult for the plant to survive that is why they are having either they do not have any leaves or they are having very small leaves so two two uh, adaptations we have learned here what are they number 1 they are having very long roots number 2 they don't have any leaves see the examples there are two kinds of vegetation found here they either they are having very small leaves in the first picture and in the second picture also you can see very small leaves and in the second picture it is very clear that they have very long roots and in the first picture in the second one the first part is cactus which do not have any leaves this is a way of adaptation they store water in their spongy stem which has a thick covering and spines on it these cactus type plants they have very spongy stem their stem is not like the other plants their stem store water which has a thick covering and spines on it this stem has a thick covering and it has spines also so that the other animals will not disturb them okay spines keep animals away from them no animal will reach them no human being will reach them they can survive in the desert region the stem is green and contains chlorophyll you have heard about chlorophyll what is chlorophyll the substance which help the plants to make their own food and this food making is done by the uh, this these plants also by the desert plants also so they don't have any leaf but their stem their stem is green and that stem contains the chlorophyll normally the stem of the plants is not green suppose if you take an example of a mango tree do you find its stem in green color no but the stem of the desert plants it is green in color it makes food for the plant this stem is green and the stem makes food for the plant see the example this is what a cactus and the cactus may it is green in color there are thorns on it and this the uh, stem is very soft because it contains huge amount of water it has a thick covering and this stem helps in the process of photosynthesis okay now we are moving to the third type of adaptation what is that adaptation for getting air adaptations for getting air where where we can uh, th see this type of adaptation in those areas where there is less availability of air let us see some examples number 1 mangrove trees we will learn about two types of uh, trees which adapt for getting air first one is mangrove tree mangrove trees grow in swampy areas where do you find mangrove trees the area of swampy the area where the soil and uh, the soil is very coarse in nature it absorbs a large amount of water the soil does not contain air in the swampy area soil does not have air so what do they do their roots come out of the water to get the air okay these mangrove trees their roots come out of water to get the air this is the example of mangrove trees see the trees the roots some of the roots of this trees have been out it is not in the soil it is not in the water that is out of the soil that is known as mangrove tree they adapt themselves so that they can get air second example is here what is the second example it is floating plant we will learn about the adaptation of floating plant 
leaves of floating plants bear stomata on their upper surface only which are not blocked by water and remain open to exchange gases the part of the tree the part of the tree which helps in the uh, food making what is that stomata the holes on the leaves the these plants the floating plants are stomata only on their upper surface and they are not blocked by water because they, they don't immerse in water and they remain open so that it can exchange gases i'll show you a picture of, as an example these are the floating plants they float they grow on the surface of the water they are the floating plants you can see that the plants root and stem are in the water but its leaf it is not there's only the lower part of the leaf is in the water upper part of the water is not it is above the surface of the water and stomata is there on the surface and uh, it can help in the procedure of chlorophyll uh, in the process of photosynthesis okay exchange of gases can be done understood it okay now we are moving to the next uh, type of adaptation what is that adaptation for getting food ready okay parasitic plants cannot make their own food this particular type of plants are there which are known as parasitic plants they cannot make their own food then how do what do they do how do they get food they develop suckers to draw food from the host plant what do they do they draw food from the plant on which it grows that is known as that plant is known as host plant to get food from the host plant what do they do they have developed suckers this is an example of a parasite uh, uh, on that branch we can see that a plant is growing this types of plant is known as a parasite and parasite cannot make their own food rather it has developed its suckers and these suckers draw food from the host plant got it now okay moving ahead now a few plants like picture plant have developed parts to trap insects there are some plants like picture plant i think you have uh, learned about picture plant earlier also what do they do how do they adapt they have developed a part a special part in their body so that they can trap insects and that is their food they eat these insects for nitrogenous food they don't get this picture plants don't get nitrogenous food so what do they do they eat the insects so that the plant can get nitrogenous food okay see this example this is what a picture plant this picture plant you know that the upper part of the uh, plant picture plant it closes when an insect get inside isn't it okay so that insect is eaten by the plant it is a uh, flesh eating plant isn't it okay these insects are eaten by the plant and they get the nitrogenous food this is what an adaptation made by this plant for getting food now moving ahead to the next one what is that adaptation for protection the fifth one isn't it okay adaptation for protection how do the trees or plants adapt themselves to protect themselves the trees can repair their damaged parts by themselves there are some trees if even if their parts damage then also it will be repaired that is what protection next one they grow a hard protective covering over the damaged soft tissue how do they repair themselves a hard protective covering is formed over the damaged soft tissue 
the tissue which has damaged that is a soft one so in place of that soft tissue what do the trees do they develop a hard tissue so that it can repair its damage the remaining part of the tree will not be damaged an example you can find here we have cut a part of this plant for example and what will happen that will it will uh, this soft tissue will be decayed after some time so the tree has developed a hard protective covering so that the other parts of the plant the tree will not be affected this is what an adaptation so shall we move ahead okay we'll see the next example some plants like oranges bear thorns on them one way of protection that you have seen they developed a, they develop a hard tissue so that they can repair themselves number 2 some plants are there which have thorns on them thus animals are not able to eat them they can protect themselves from the animals see the example these are the plants which have thorns on it That's how beautiful flower is there in that uh, long plant see but that flower and the leaves are, will not be disturbed by anybody even the animals or the human beings no one will disturb them by because they have thorns on it all these three three plants which are there in the picture they have developed thorns on them okay so that is also way of adaptation now there are some plants like upas tree which are poisonous these trees are poisonous so animals do not eat their fruits or bark it has been developed by nature that the tree is poisonous and animals know it so animals will not eat their fruits or bark so it can protect it from the animals see the examples these are the tree this is what upa tree upa tree and this tree can it it is a poisonous tree this fruit and its leaves are poisonous so that no animal come and disturb the tree a way of protection that is what a type of adaptation you have learned a lot today okay understood also now we will have the revision let us see what are the topics we covered number 1 adaptations for getting sunlight number 2 adaptations for getting and storing water number 3 adaptations for getting air number 4 adaptations for getting food and number 5 adaptations for protection the chapter has six topics but we have completed only five what is the sixth topic remaining the adaptations for seed dispersal we will cover this we will have this portion this topic in the second part got it so you can uh, write some examples of these different kinds of adaptations okay so we have come to the end of the class today what you will do you will stay at home take care of yourself okay so we'll meet again tomorrow bye